This is Dave McCain with the Right Tree Genealogy doing a follow-up video about the Family Finder. Now there's been questions posted on different forums, pet questions directly to me. So I thought I'd begin this video with what was given to the group project administrators back in November. So let me bring this up. Back in November 2023, yeah, Family Tree sent this out to us. Excited about the Family Finder Hapo groups. And notice this right here. We are starting this week with small batches of about 2,000 kits per day to monitor progress and to make sure everything is working as intended. And we will see how it take, how long it takes for them to process. So that's back, back in November when they started this. Now here's a key point here. Current customers, customers that are on the current chip starting in March 2019. So if your if you got your started processing in, in March of 2019, it's considered on the new chip. Prior to that, it's considered the old chip. It says we'll receive results first. Now read, see this right here. Customers who purchased and received results between August the 1st, when the announcement was made, and November the 30th will be in the first batch of family finder y haplo groups they will define them as soon as they come out and i have some information to show you where i have some of our kits that did this and then look at this right here once we have completed the current chip we will start processing the older chips once those are complete unlock transfers will be processed next that's what's important here they're not just going to start doing as soon as you transfer it over does not mean they're going to do it they're going to start processing yours when it comes down to it a transfer will not be processed till after they get their data done so that's an important factor to look here that's the way it reads and the way you look at this so what i'm about to show you is i went through our project and pulled a file together of those who have taken the family finder and sorted them down to those that weren't transferred and then broke it down even further for ones for me to monitor and see how the family finder works for them and here's what here's what we got right here so as i was saying i broke down the uh, testers we have in our surname project i got down to these 16 watchable kits and what i mean by that they're the most uh recent tests that were completed that if uh, either had the family finder already defined or they did a specific SNP testing that I'm going to describe right now. Those in the dark green, our project administrator worked with Family Tree DNA a long time ago, worked through a process of having a bunch of testers that he could test a group of uh, SNPs that were found in some of the members, but not all of them. And it turns out what you see here that these two, uh, the A1732 and the A1733, turn out to be the terminal SNPs in his specific family branch. So, with that said, that's what those are. Let me eliminate those right now. Those that are specifically for the A1732 and the A1733. So now it breaks down to this. There are 13 left. What we have that took place here and of importance is in the light green. These are all the testers that have the that were non-transfers that actually was given a confirmed haplo group with the family find. The ones in the light green here. I'm going to go over after I finish discussing this. The next thing I'm going to do is go over and show you how far back in time those branches are. We're going to go through each one of those. There are seven branches that I'm going to go show where they stand uh, on the haplo tree based on family find only. But let me finish this first. There are, as I was just talking about in the other part of the presentation, and back in November, they said if it's a test that was after March the 1st, uh, 2019, it would be on the new chip. Well, I have three that I had defined uh, before 
that one says it's the, I called it the old chip, but it's in blue because it's May 17th, 2019. The question I have is, did that test start before they actually defined the new chip to be used? Here's one that clearly, the one that's uh, February 11th, 2019, that's clearly the old chip. And then here's one that is November the 20th, 2019, and that one is clearly the new chip. But I use the term old chip because they're still in 2019, and I expect them to be done after the other ones. The ones in the orange are clearly the new chip and are going to happen first. Everybody that is tested now will get their haplogroup defined. As soon as they, if they do a family finder now, they're going to get it defined when their test results come in. Then they're going back and grabbing as they're going along the older ones. This person in 2022 will have theirs defined. This person from 2021 will have theirs defined. And this person from 2020 will have theirs defined as well. So what I'm looking at there is they're going to progress backwards. They're going to do a two-fold approach by normal testing standards that you would, you know, as you're going along, you've got your normal process, the new normal process, which is to give you a family finder for the males, uh, testers when they, when they do the test now. And then they're going to be staging backwards on the old test until they get those all complete. Then they're going to do what we call the old chip. And that we have a bunch of those that we have in our project that are pre-2019. But I decided just to focus on these on this video and to, to keep track of when these take place. So I'll, I'll do a follow-up after all these are posted and say, hey, when did they come out? When did they get these completed? Now, with no more delay, let's go over and take a look at each one of these confirmed haplogroups uh, as they stand today for these family find non-big Y testers. So first I'm going to show the... A1732, this is a terminal SNP. This is when we did a SNP testing, specific testing. It comes to 1850 CE or AD, depending on which way you want to look at that. So that's very recent. When we look at the 33, we see that it is 1900 thereabout. Now again, it's give or take you within the range of the actual testers, but this is, I'm going to go, I'm going to simply use the haplogroup story for this presentation. So then you have the A1732. Now let's take a look at one of those other kits that we were just discussing. And let's go back to that real quickly to pick one. This one right here, R-S22047. Paste that guy in and run the test. So what I want to show here first is that first one on that list, we know he has a family find test. It says 1500 BCE or BC. So then you take and add 2000 years to that because it's 2024. So you just add 2000 to it. That's a 3500 year old SNP found with the family find. It's still a lot more forward than what a R M269 is. Let's just go ahead and put that one in just so we can say this is one that's pretty common in Europe. That's 4350 BC or BCE or 6,300 years ago. So 6,300 years ago. So yeah, the family finder did find one more current. So now let's grab another one and uh, fix it as well. So let's take this one here. Well, actually that's 1800 bc or bce and that makes it 3800 years so that's still three about 3000 or 2500 to 3000 years newer than the m uh 269 so yeah that's that's good i mean it's it's not great what we're going to see here and as we continue none of these are in current era okay ce or ad that are done for family fine, but some of them vary in distance. And let's grab another one here. So that's that one. Let's grab another one. Let's do this next one here. RS14328. Doing this live here. See what we all see. Now look at this one. Now this one's further back in time. 
uh, with this. And by the way, all these ones that I'm showing you that are in this light green were, were showing up since they announced this and their testing came through. So this is late 2023, beginning of 2024. This one says 2650 BCE at 2000 years. It's about 4,650 years ago. Still closer than the one that they just generally define, uh, but it is further back in time. So as you can tell, different testers with Family Find are going to have potentially a different distance in backwards or forward. Let's go to the next one. So now we're going to do an I. Now this I, Y3712 is 3600 uh, BCE. Uh, and then you add the 2000 years, so it makes it about 5600. Still close to a thousand years newer, but that's pretty far back. It's stepped back pretty far back in time for the I one here. So again, each person's uh, information varies. Let's grab another one. Now this is R-L2. You can actually could have actually done this as a SNP test because I know some people have actually done this at this L2 as an actual um, just a plain SNP, but. This is through Family Finder. It says 2550 BCE at 2000, so about 4,500 years ago is when that one formed. You know, it is confirmed. The, the data, these are confirmed haplogroups until you do a big Y. Let's go to another one. So this one is of interest to me because this tester has chosen to, to do a multiple test at one time at Family Tree DNA, and they have uh, they got a big Y coming next, but the family finder gave them uh, RS1491, which is about 4,000 years ago, if 1950 here BCE and had 2000, so right out 4,000 years ago. It, it gives him a starting point, and I will say this for this particular tester, it does because their name, uh, they don't have the Barton surname, which is this project but they are connected with other Bartons. What this did do though, is we have a few by their surname in the project, and it did show that they are in the same area of the tree as those that have done Big Y 700. So it is, it got them to say, hey, yeah, they, they should be worth upgrading. So there is a positive there, and we'll keep going and, and see what my final thoughts are on this at this point is the follow-up to the original. So now let's go back over. So this is the one we did originally when I done my first video on, hey, here's a haplogroup defined by family find. Now this individual has not done a big Y testing and hasn't shown interest in them doing so, but they did do the family finder. And we have found, interestingly enough, we've taken a look at this individual. We found with their family finder they have another tester that has not done the Y test at all that we have contacted. So there is a benefit for this particular individual ha having done the family finder. Uh, we're waiting for response from the person, but we're, we're really interested in them doing a Y DNA test and trying to connect and, and drive down this guy's family's branch because there is another person in his branch that has done a big Y. And if we have another big Y that is like the third cousin, fourth cousin range, it's going to help better define that one. So there's a positive there. But to state this here, though, this one's about uh, 3,100, 3,200 years ago for this particular SNP. As you can see, there hasn't been one that's been within a thousand years for our project to date. I'm going to continue monitoring those other tests that we, we see there. Um, there are, and let's go back to that quickly. I'm expecting that the person in 2022 will come first, the one in 2021 will come next, the 2020, and then the 2019s will show up. We'll see. I have 66 testers that are non-transfers that I evaluated that have some level of testing that I'm going to be able to find out about. Old chips all the way back to 2010, okay? Now, we're expecting those to have a higher up the branching than those that are at the 2022. I'm gonna focus on the ones that are near term, the ones that are 2022, 21, 20, and 19, and see when they hit, because those other ones are, as they come along, they're going to continue and finish their current testers, and then they're going to bridge in these prior tests. 
remember this, their confirmed haplogroup will be most likely, most likely, higher up on the chain. Now, it could be the same as some of these. It is really a, an interesting prospect. I want to state the following. One, I think family find uh, haplogroups are of value. I think if uh, you have a person that wants to test family find to try to find other cousins and help out your project, this is a way to start. Two, I say it as a start. I believe all testers that are in the Y database at some point uh, should be helped or do it themselves. Love to see everyone have a big Y700. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing right here or watching some of these other videos. Let's continue learning together.